Today we are going to talk about load balancing in OpenStack. OpenStack supports native as well as third-party methods of load balancing. And there are advantages and disadvantages of each. So we can go over in detail each of those a little bit later. First, let's talk about what load balancing is. Load balancing is a technique used by uh, service providers, IT departments to provide a mission critical service which is always available and it scales per the user requests. Uh, there are many load balancing techniques. Um, one of the most common load balancing technique is the round robin based load balancing. And what that does is it distributes the user requests across the workloads in a round robin manner. There are other more intelligent techniques like a technique which monitors load on each uh, backend worker to figure out where to serve the next user request from and so on. What is the reason that we want load balancing in the first place? Let's say you are delivering a mission critical service uh, for your organization. So you want that service to be always up and available and performant. And the way uh, this can be achieved with load balancing is by distributing the workload between many workers at the back end while the front is managed by the load balancer service which is routing requests to different backends. Uh, with this technique, when the user requests increase in load, more workers can be spawned at the back end to take up that additional load. Similarly, when the load goes down, the workers in the back end can be scaled back. Let's say uh, we want to handle uh, calamities uh, with our infrastructure. Then the backend can be planned so that it doesn't go down all at once and some portion of it can be served by the fronting load balancer service. Due to all these uh, unique capabilities, load balancing services are becoming essential in most modern IT as well as application deployments. So with that, let's talk about the third party load balancer support in OpenStack. So OpenStack has a well-known API, which is called LBAS. It's currently at version two. And this API can be backfilled by third-party LBAS services like AVI, F5 networks, and so on. So the few considerations uh, that may want you to choose a third-party LBAS is uh, just the familiarity with a LBAS solution. So you might have an LBAS system in your IT department or in your cloud, which uh, you already use and trust and uh, have automation set up around it. So uh, your applications already use it. The other factor for choosing uh, a third party LBAS is uh, the third party LBAS might be battle tested. It might be tested in your production for at scale and uh, it is known to perform under peak loads. So what should be the considerations when going with native LBAS service in OpenStack? Uh, the native LBAS service in OpenStack, it's called Octavia. And this has been part of the OpenStack project since the Liberty release. Uh, the native LBAS in OpenStack uh, has distinct advantage of being fully compliant with the LBAS v2 API and is maintained by an open source community. So people who already use OpenStack in their deployment might find it easier to use Octavia-based LBAS as the next step in their cloud journey. Octavia is also fully integrated with Keystone and is multi-tenant like all other OpenStack services. So if you have an application or a cloud deployment which works well with OpenStack, uh, Octavia is an easier way to integrate Elbas into the mix. Per our experience at Platform 9, the users who deploy OpenStack services for their CI-CD workloads uh, are using the batteries included Octavia project as the Elbas solution, while the users who deploy OpenStack based workloads in production uh, are choosing to use third-party solutions.